All right, hey folks, uh, Shane here with a brief intro before this episode. Many years back, I came across a gentleman named Pete Iyer. Right when I'd stumbled across Vanu, he was already traveling across the country in a van, doing a lot of important work relating to freedom and outreach. Since then, he's done a lot of other things, which we'll hear about in a future episode of Vanu, uh, and he also recently started a podcast called Duty to Protect, uh, which I had the pleasure of being on recently. Uh, that is the conversation you're about to hear today. Now, I will say, Pete and I have interacted maybe a dozen times or less, to my memory. Uh, not that often, but uh, he's one of those folks I resonated with from the start. Uh, his focus has always been action, and he's been building his own liberated lifestyle for a long time. Certainly a lot to learn from him uh, when we get him uh, on Bonnie here soon. Anyway, I had a couple quick announcements before turning you over to that. Uh, first off, and most importantly, uh, this coming Tuesday, December 27th at 2 p.m. Central, the second Pasnia Second Realm Assembly will be happening in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chat on Telegram. Uh, Rex, my most recent guest, uh, Bastard Chris, and others will join to discuss Rex's Pasnia-esque vision and to carry on the endless discussions transpiring over the past few weeks in the aforementioned chat. And since this is a Second Realm Assembly, please do bring any questions, topics, or whatever else you'd like to bring up. Again, this happens December 27th at 2 p.m. Central in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence Telegram. Uh, just visit t.me forward slash Pasnia chat to join. I'm guessing you can probably just search for Pasnia on Telegram too, and it'll pop up. It's a public group. Uh, secondly, I'd like to remind you that the second edition of my book, Volume A Strategy for Self Liberation, dropped on September 11th of this year. It features a new foreword by Ben Stone, a new introduction by yours truly, and a few new chapters. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu book to order your copy today, or get this book in the Strategy Sample Pack, a bundle available on the LUA site. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu book. I uh, think that's all. Hope to see you at the second Pasnia Second Realm Assembly, and uh, wishing you a joyous and liberated Holy Day season from the Free Republic. Cheers. Welcome to Duty to Protect. We help individuals develop the mindset and skills to protect themselves and others. My name is Pete, and I'm grateful that you're here with me. In this episode, we hear from Shane Radliff. Shane brings to us a paradigm and a lifestyle called Vanu. Vanu, a radical self-liberation strategy, was first put forth in the 1960s by a man who went by the pen name of Rayo. Shane is responsible for almost single-handedly resurrecting Rayo's writings and for proliferating them, and he very much lives up to what he advocates. As you'll hear, Vanu is very much aligned with our aims here at Duty to Protect, in that both seek to maximize voluntary interactions and to minimize coercive interactions. For example, to mitigate the likelihood of future threats by doing something as commonsensical as vetting and being selective of the people with whom you associate and work with. Further, both Vanu and Duty to Protect focus on the individual, the only constituent in society that acts. I hope and trust that Shane's input will provide you with some concepts and tools, such as Mean Time to Harassment, the Second Realm, and Servile Society, that you can utilize to better make sense of the world around you and to then act accordingly. All right, that's enough for me. Let's really start this episode and hear from Shane. Welcome, Shane. Thanks for making the time to join us here at Duty to Protect. Hey, man. Uh, it's uh, great, to, yeah, great to connect and hey, man, appreciate so the invitation. Great. Yes, sir. Uh, you and I have known each other for some years, and I think it's fair to say that our own individual paradigms have much overlap. And though we have each pursued slightly different tacks at times, our efforts have found some collaboration. Case in point, this conversation as I begin each episode of Duty to Protect, I share this tagline. We help individuals develop the mindset and skills to protect themselves and others. And I believe that sentiment really aligns with the area you've largely been focused on, Vanu. Do you agree? And firstly, would you define Vanu? Yeah, um, yeah, I definitely think uh, yeah, there's, um, there's plenty of overlap. 
the, the podcast and uh, our efforts too over the years. So, um, but yeah, Vanu is, uh, I guess, uh, just I guess briefly defined. Uh, it's an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable. That's where the V O N U comes from. Um, and uh, basically, the idea is to become as invulnerable to coercion as humanly possible. And uh, this is done um, mainly by the adoption of radical lifestyle changes. So, um, Rayo, the main proponent of uh, of this freedom strategy, uh, he was yeah very a very radical freedom pioneer in the late '60s. Um, started as a van nomad and then uh, ended up as uh, I guess say a wilderness Vanuan. Uh, lived in a tent uh, in the Siski National Forest or the Siski region, as they called it. So, and I guess the main tagline of Vanu that I always try to I try to put out there, um, you know, much like what you talk about, um, you know, it's, Vanu is very much uh, years for the making. So we all come from different backgrounds. Got different skills, um, different aspirations, and uh, you know, Vanu is very much uh, individual based in that regard, and that's really what what attracted me to it. Um, any individual can pick up and utilize themselves, you know, at any time. Um, it's your radical self liberation. It's not uh, you know some some strategy you know promote like compromise and such, and uh, that's not what Vanu does. Um, it's definitely not uh, not what Vanu does. I guess just uh, one other I guess background point of Vanu that might be valuable for you know pertaining to your podcast is. Uh, yeah, if one if one utilizes the principles of Anu, uh, they can forego a lot of future people. Uh, so one example, um, bludgies or you know cops, uh, they don't usually just show up, uh, right? They have to be called by someone. So if you only work with those that you trust, um, that you um, you know, for example, vetting associates properly, and uh, operate out of optimally free locations, uh, you can forego a, a potential coercive encounter, the need for arbitration and you know dispute resolution later on. So. Um, yeah, I guess the long and short of it, um, in terms of Vanu here, is that the best way to minimize course of encounters is to uh, build a lifestyle um, that minimizes those prospects from taking place. So I guess that might uh, set us up for, for a good discussion here. So I'll turn it over to you and see where you want to go. Yeah, I really appreciate that uh, emphasis on being proactive to uh, alleviate or mitigate any uh, course of threats from others. I guess uh, in parallel with this, uh, the foundational step of duty to protect is prepare. And so that has to do with realizing the magnitude of conditioning and learning to see through it while cultivating one's own internal compass and critical thinking skills. And this all seems to parallel a lot with the book you offered, you authored called Anu, a strategy for self-liberation. Uh, the emphasis, again, as you previously noted, being on the individual. And uh, so do you have suggestions, uh, especially like tangible steps that listeners can employ that they may not have considered or that they could incorporate into their life on this front? Yeah, sure, sure. So I guess um, when, when we started, uh, um, we did, so I do the, the Vani podcast too, um, and uh, we started our action portion on, um, I guess, more kind of the philosophical stuff, like exercising the collective books and really just, just understanding that, um, you know, there, there are kind of two realms, right, as far as I see it. There's, you know, society where we can be free, pockets of freedom, and then there's the survival society. So, you know, um, and I guess just to put out a definition here, um, the survival society is a society that does not respect self-ownership or individual liberty, uh, but rather heralds these government and authority. Uh, so it upholds the collective as superior to the individual. So, um, yeah, that's the first thing is uh, like really to, to always be conscious of, you know, the, the like there's, um, you know, there, there's a difference there. You know, if you're dealing with people in, you know, pockets of freedom and in in what I call the second realm in the free society, um, it's different than dealing with folks um, that may still, you know, be, be, you know, very, very deep into their conditioning and their programming and, uh, you know, may lend towards co uh, lead towards coercion. So I guess that'd be the first thing. Yeah, just always keep that in mind. And uh, then the next thing we talked about um, uh, when it came to action is, uh, is, is financial independence. Uh, as we've kind of seen over the past few years. Um, a lot of the a lot of the coercion from the survival society. Um, right now, it comes in the term in, in, in the way of you know financial coercion, and not necessarily in the sense of like a gun to the head. It's more so, um, you know, like uh, um, do this or you know lose your job, you know, lose your your, your source of income. So um, that's kind of the I guess one of, one of the other really really important first steps is if if your listeners haven't already to start, um, I guess working towards uh, you know side hustles or alternative methods of income um, because if uh, if you can provide. For uh, financially and you know with with your um, you know ba with your with your needs um, things that you know basic you know areas of survival um, then again you know in, in terms of Anu preparing not having to worry about protecting yourself um, I think is yeah is definitely definitely the way to go I guess that's what what, what initially what comes to mind now um, obviously there's there's a lot of lifestyle changes in the, in the area of Anu um, so I guess uh, yeah I'd recommend my book Vanu strategy for self-liberation if you want to go really deep into that um, or I guess if you want to go even deeper uh, the Vanu podcast which is I guess coming up on five years now so um, there's uh, you know lots of diving into the individual lifestyle changes um, you know additional things to consider if your listeners are interested 
gauging your mean time to harassment um, is uh, you know something that Rayo talked about doing back in the '60s. But um, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's what comes to mind at that moment. Yeah, that, that all sounds very pertinent, especially the financial independence. I was just listening to some other content and they were saying just how empowering it is when, you know, individuals are self-employed and that they, you know, they're not as uh, controllable and whatnot. And, and like you said, if you can figure out a hustle or a couple or a few, then you can kind of uh, really carve out some freedom, some area for yourself that uh, you're not as uh, likely to bend if other people make some orders, like you said. And I, I'm glad you mentioned like the Servile Society because this is um, this is something I've always appreciated about your Vanu related efforts is that you use the technology of language of words. So like rather than parroting the sophistry of those who want to control or manage others, you speak plainly and you call things out for what they are. So on the Vanu podcast website, you have this list of terms, and you did say uh, Servile Society already. Another one I really think is apt is controlled schizophrenia, which points out inconsistencies or internal contradictions that we individually or people around us may have. And to me, this is important because it kind of frames where things are at. Like when you realize that, then you can set yourself up for like moving forward past it. Can you speak to that? Just like how important it is to use accurate language, both between say me and you or you and your neighbor, or just internally with your own thought processes? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, uh, you know, right. I guess, um, I talk about on on the Bonnie podcast and just generally about you know bringing our bringing our, bringing our principles in line with our actions you know as an individual and um, I've kind of noticed the same thing with language too is that um, this kind of gets into some I guess some occult stuff but um, I kind of view the English language as like spellcraft I mean spelling start if you start like consciously looking at the words that you're saying um, it's like uh, um, the words that we use disempower us like understand like you have to stand under something um, so I guess uh, and that, that's something. I definitely get into, um, you know, with Ray in the, in the 1960s. Um, yeah, like, why is it important to, I guess, to, to be very, I guess, just to be blunt about stuff? Clarity. Clarity is important. Yeah, I think you hit, to me, at least you hit the nail on the head with saying just, like, utilizing that language is, like, disempowering. Mm -hmm. You know, I often, uh, when I, in previous projects, when I would deal with police employee actions and things, I would very much strive not to use the word authorities as is in like common parlance because the root is author and i don't want to allow i don't want to just give their narrative power and say that yes what their version is correct or yeah, whatever you, but you don't um, let them author your story yeah exactly and you you mentioned a, a moment ago also uh, the concept of mean time to harassment and i think that's really insightful so duty to protect is ultimately about protection intellectual protection physical protection in other words, not to be coerced, just like Vanu. And it's so I think, uh, you know, I think this this phrase or this concept, this uh, tool, I guess, a, a framework mm -hmm. of uh, mean time to harassment is one that's often overlooked, even by like fellow travelers and stuff. So could you talk about it a bit and why it may be useful for listeners to factor into their own lifestyle and actions? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and I guess I'll preface it by saying, um, so, the, so Vanu is a freedom strategy. I wrote for a number of libertarian publications throughout the 60s and 70s, but most of this comes from the book called Vonister's Personal Freedom that was published, uh, I guess, nine years after he disappeared in 1983. And uh, in terms of meantime harassment in particular, um, he wrote like one article on it. That's all the all the ever all 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 else he all else he ever really described it. So, um, so I guess meantime to harassment. I mean, it's kind of ours for the making too, I guess. But just generally speaking, as you know, in terms of definitions, um, it's 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 a way to gauge the time in between um, co coercive encounter. Um, so the if uh, if people look uh, and, and and the book, uh, I guess all these books are available. available for um, but yeah, there's a chart that he he provides in in the original book. Um, basically. Uh, Activity, the lifestyles um, that require lower, 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 lower competence levels, like a, like in nomads, for example. Most people know how to drive a car. It's not hard to get a vehicle, and um, some people are you know forced to live in their car, right? If they lose their home or something. So it's not something that's like it's not something that's really difficult to do per se. Um, but you know, like living on a sailboat or or, or um, I don't know, a wilderness vani. Those require more more skills, more more competency, and uh, I guess uh, there's um, and I guess the, the activity of the lifestyle too. Um, if you're you know concealed in the wilderness, that's less activity than if you're driving far through the city, right? Um, less noticeable. So basically, it's just taking into account you know your surroundings, um, taking into account um, you know um, yeah I guess the 
the potentiality of running into somebody that might be a potential coercer. Um, and yeah, basically just just a way to kind of calculate, um, a sort a sort a sort of way to calculate, um, yeah, how long your lifestyle will be invulnerable to coercers. Um, and yeah, I point the listeners uh, in the direction of the book, but yeah, there's not much on it. And uh, um, I actually there's a, a guy that I came across in uh, the past and 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 uh, you know one of uh, one of our Vani chats. And uh, he actually, I'll be interviewing him hopefully here in the next few weeks, but he has gone really far with the concept, much further than I have. So um, there should, there might be something else on the subject here, here in the next few weeks or month or so. But, but yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of a review. Wow. Yeah, I, I was unaware that there was just such a scant uh, information from Rayo on, on this concept. And I appreciate you finding it and putting it front and center. And I think, uh, yeah, on, on that note, I, w I, w I guess I'd be curious to hear because I, I know a lot of folks sort of in the personal freedom sphere, they might look to different like thinkers or whoever, people who have inspired them. But uh, Rayo is probably someone who's not uh, on the radar of a lot of people. Uh, even, even you know, I, I'm, it's definitely changed because of your uh, multi-year efforts and uh, that of your colleague. But uh, how, did, how did you first come across Rayo, I guess, now that we're on that subject? And mm -hmm curious because it, it shows like your own uh, drive to learn and do research and and share it's it's a pretty pretty good um example sure well, I, I appreciate that uh yeah so i guess it would have been um yeah 2017 i think it was 2016 actually probably now i think i'm thinking about it uh, but it was uh actually liberty and Tech raven the bonnie podcast um but uh we were doing something we called the uh, direct action series Kyle, my old host, the Vondi podcast, found this, stumbled across, you know, this book from a random blog post um, that was kind of doing a book review on it. And uh, he sent me the Amazon link for it, and it was like 30 bucks. This, this you know, old green book um, was like 30 bucks. And at that point, I was buying a lot of like Austrian economics books, and you can get like, three massive books for like $10. So, like, that was a lot of money to spend on a book for me, especially since I had no idea what I was really getting myself into. But uh, yeah, I, I, I got the book and I read it, and it was unlike anything I'd really read before and he was you know giving you know relevant and accurate critiques of uh, you know a lot of a lot of things and i guess talking about and doing a lot of really radical things so um it's uh it really really drew my interest kyle and i decided to um i did I digitized the book and put it out for free in uh, in pdf and audiobook format um which was uh yeah a little little more of a, a little more of a process um but uh but yeah i mean ray was largely largely unknown um there are a number of articles um that were published and like i think uh like uh was that public? I guess uh, there's a libertarian uh, magazine. I can't even remember what it's called off the top of my head now. But so all that stuff's mirrored on the Vonnie Podcast reason? website. Uh, but there, uh, not reason, no. But uh, there, there's no libertarian. Like 1987 was when this article was released. But it was uh, basically the mystery made oh. a libertarian movement, um, which is an art basically like mm -hmm. a retrospect on Rayo, uh, Tom Marshall, which is which is I guess it maybe is given name. But um, yeah, they're very 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 scant, um, very scant and. Um, but I guess the the other thing that might be might be pertinent um, is uh, if your listeners are familiar with agorism um, and Samuel Konkin. Well, Samuel Konkin actually got. Um, if you look at uh, there's an article he wrote called uh, I guess ethical enclave trading, um, black and gray markets, and um, he wrote in 1967, and I, I discovered that that Konkin would have been like 18 years old at that time. Um, and if you look at the, it's exactly what you know Konkin talked about you know 20 some you know 15 years later uh, when he went to agorism and started promoting that. And then I guess later, you know, later after the fact, this is kind of my just just this had for for a while. I went and actually decided to look at it and see if Konkin actually knew that Rayo existed. And I found a handful of articles where he mentioned um, Rayo and Vanu specifically, so he was familiar with it. He I don't think he actually ever credited credited Rayo with that, but he did credit Rayo for being a radical self liberator. So there was credit for that. But um, yeah, very very um, very hard to find. And and now I've I've gotten all of the you know old libertarian zines from the 60s and 70s that he uh, you know wrote for and, and edited. And I'm going through a, still going through, and it would probably be a long, you know, 10, 20 year process of actually digitizing all those, uh, getting those. Yeah, the information will never disappear again. So I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, man, that's great. That's really interesting. I, uh, you just kind of took a risk on that $30 purchase, but I guess trusted your intuition and it's led you down this path yep. and it's been really fruitful and, and I think probably benefited thousands of people. So it's really, uh, really impressive and great. Great to hear. It reminds me of when, like, uh, I don't know, Randy Barnett, like, helped to sort of reinvigorate interest in Lysander Spooner in, in a couple of decades back and just other folks uh, doing similar things. It's There's definitely some gyms that uh, if 
that could be a pass by, but mm-hmm. but for actions such as that you took. One of, another uh, a quote I know I shared with you, and I know you probably know all his writing and quotes verbatim, but uh, that I took from one of Rayo's writings from 1969 publication. It, it just kind of echoes what we've already talked about, but the emphasis on individual action. But I just want to share it because I think it's just so on point. But he said, I suggest that liberation is possible only on the individual level and only by changing attitudes and living patterns together. It is to integrate intellect with reality to follow through with action. And I, and I see this happening today, like say with folks who are seeing the need, say to like uh, divest their allegiance and as many ties as they can to like regimes and structures that they don't agree with and, you know, to make themselves more vulnerable to coercion and doing things such as like food production. And um, I, I guess, do you have any other thoughts on that? Or do, do you care to weigh in on this angle anymore? Um, yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is that, um, um, yeah, individual action. We, we have to become the individuals that would exist um, in this free society that many of us desire to come into fruition. Um, so, you know, the Liberty Circles, it's about, you know, personal responsibility, will. Um, and the Vanu realm is for radical liberation. It's about taking, you know, taking every single aspect of your life into your own hands, um, or at least knowing how to, if you to, I guess is, is um, a caveat I'll add there. But, um, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, even, even more than that, though. Um, that radical celebration is, isn't, is, you know, isn't easy to do. Um, but yeah, we've got to do that now, you know, those structures and institutions that, um, you know, are very, you know, opposed to such ideas of autonomy. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds, I mean, it kind of sounds cliche, but it, you're just, you know, raising your own, you know, raising your own, taking control of your own health, um, you know, um, gaining some level of financial independence or at least, uh, you know, some sort of um, financial independence through, through multiple income streams, all of those things. Um, are absolutely huge, um, and you know they're not as grandiose as some you know strategies, um, but at the same time they're they're super effective. And um, living by example is, I think, you know, it's, it's often touted, but that's that's really what it comes down to. So, yeah, yeah, I suppose that's that's what comes to mind there. Yeah, that, that totally totally makes sense. And just to be clear, because you know, I, I I don't think probably a big majority or even a sizable minority of listeners may be familiar with say that term that you mentioned earlier, agorism, I, but I do think it's worth uh, everyone checking out. But uh, but just to be clear, to further this line, I mean, so duty to protect, again, is about protection at the end of the day. And, you know, you're, you're advocating VANU, which is invulnerability to coercion. So, you know, very similar um, concepts and aims. And uh, I think it's worth us teasing out just for a little bit, just like who one may need to protect themselves from because, mm-hmm. you know, yes, there's the obvious like a random stranger on the street, but if we look at numbers and we look at, okay, who is, you know, I know one of the terms on your Vanu podcast website is democide. And that's probably something that a lot of people haven't ever heard of, but uh, you know, and just like sort of these organizations of quote unquote legitimized violence and, you know, and coercion. So it, could you unpack that a little bit? Because I mean, just thinking about, you know, and vulnerability to coercion, it may, again, like, bring to mind just some some street criminal, let's say, though, and I guess you can make the argument that anyone who's being aggressive is a criminal, street criminal in that way, but um, could you speak to, like, maybe the larger um, picture of, like, who this label is applicable toward? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and, and I'll, I'll harken back to the the serval, you know, the serval society, that, that distinction again. Um, and uh, so, so, yeah, there's this was a, I guess, a very, very important distinction by Rayo back in the late 60s, too, when he had very valid critiques of anarcho-capitalism back in the late 60s, which is wild. I didn't think that term was around then. But, uh, uh, yeah, so I guess another thing is he, he distinguished between public and private coercion. So you have public coercion, um, which is governments. Um, these are the people that are trying to tax you or regulate you or your existence and, and things like that. So everyone's pretty familiar with that. Um, that's the, you know, the, the more the public coercers. Um, but then there's also the private coercers. So you're saying um, these are these are just private violators of person and property. So your your private street criminal, um, your you know who these people are the people that are going to you know lie, steal, or I guess steal or defraud you that are that are, are operating um, operating under the purview of a government, I guess per se. But um, mm. so Ray did a good job of distinguishing between those two. Who are we, we becoming you know invulnerable to coercion or you know like who are we trying to become invulnerable to coercion from? Um, well, public coercion, government, private coercion, private coercers. But then there's also this this additional element here, which I guess I've been trying to wrap my head around and exactly the impact um, specifically, but uh, more so, I guess, just the, I guess, the digital technocracy, too. Um, that's also, even though it might be somewhat artificial, 
people. Um, that's also some, some other, I guess, form of coercion that needs to be taken into account. As I said earlier, it usually requires, you know, for there to be some, you know, police action or requires a call, someone to make the call. Um, well, in this day and age with so much digital communication, the people that are making that first, you know, quote unquote call are artificial intelligence per se, or, you know, they're, you know, they're computers that are, you know, tracking words and whatever, whatever flowery language you want to use or not. Um, so I think that's another avenue that, again, I'm still trying to wrap my head around exactly. And I think uh, we were talking about language earlier too. Just the fact that Rayo used, um, instead of calling them, you know, cops or blue coats or something, he called them bludgies, which isn't just out and overt, right? It's not like you don't know exactly what you're talking about unless, unless you define it. A lot of the terminology that Rayo used um, is not something that's going to pop up. That they're not not something not not that they're gonna be looking for, like you know, commonly used terms. So I think Vonnie makes more make, makes us more vulnerable to coercion. I've got to flesh that. Out. I've, I've I've had that article idea on on the list for like two years now, um, but uh, hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh... I'm glad you went in this direction because, uh, yeah, prior to our this particular conversation, you suggested that we also be sure to include uh, becoming invulnerable to coercion, uh, delving into the digital sphere. And I think that makes sense, especially because, you know, how ubiquitous digital technology has become for many uh, in recent years, in the past decades, you know, that we don't just focus. We obviously talked about one's mindset and also meat space. But is there low-hanging fruit or areas of improvement that you might suggest uh, listeners consider on how to like uh, become more protected in the digital sphere in that way? Yeah, definitely. And um, just to, to make it extremely relevant to, to your podcast, I'll refer back to this might have been like four years ago in an interview with Brian Sovereign. But um, we were talking about uh, encryption, and he made the comment that if uh, you're using Signal at the coffee shop, um, you're you're protecting everyone privacy that you're that you know that's around you right um your phone's on recording the conversation but it's encrypted when it goes in so like the fact that you're using encryption in that public location is making everybody making everybody safer so locking down digital security um and again yeah but so ubiquitous the, the digital and the physical realms um are overlapping a lot so um just because it's digital doesn't that it won't seep into your into your actual physical life too so that's important to take into account now as far as as far as big things um, this is a really hard thing to do. I've been I've been looking into this for some time, and um, thankfully, with the free, free and open source software is coming around. Um, these things are becoming used uh, like Linux. Um, I've got a, a few ghost a few uh, got a ghost pad and ghost tablet I use now. I'm running Ubuntu that um, I wouldn't have been able to use you know, three or four years ago. But user friendliness is coming is it seems like it's coming down. Um, there's more of these I guess open source hardware that's coming out. Um, so that's yeah, that's that's a positive. Um, but yeah, as far as practical solutions, um, so over at uh, libertyattack.com, we do offer ghost phones and ghost pads. So these are degoogled, um, basically degoogled Calyx devices, um, and then uh, J the Jamin actually hardware hacks the the ghost pad, the ghost pads. So these are old laptops um, that he actually remo he removes. Uh, um, I guess the the management engine is what they're called. That's a secondary computer you can't turn off on on your computer. They're in every single device now, essentially, um, or every single computer. You can't take them out. They can. They basically, if you have record everything, it's a second computer that you can control over. Um, well, he removes those and then puts in a, an open source, privacy respecting version of that, and then enables um, an operating system like Linux, whatever variety that people prefer. But yeah, that's the. So that I guess those are those are very easy ways now. Um, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't do it for a while. I'm, I'm not a developer, or a programmer. I'm into this stuff, but I'm an end user, um, and this stuff is becoming easy enough for me to use um, for all for all of my activities now. So um, that's a positive. And um, if people are interested in going really deep into the, I guess, that, that rabbit hole, um, there are a lot of uh, conversations with Jammin on the Fonny podcast. Um, if you just type in ghost phones or type in, you know, security culture, privacy or something like that, or just go to the episodes tab, you can find uh, a lot more information on that. But I definitely don't want to overwhelm your listeners um, with technical details and such. Sure. All right. Well, that's that's good info as it is. And yeah, I was excited. I know you all have been kind of offering different iterations of those uh, ghost phones and ghost pads. And so that's... I'm glad they're available, and um, yeah, this emphasis on privacy. Remind, and also your previous mention of uh, you know words, and you you uh, use it as a as a example the word understand, like being under something. And I was just recently listening to another podcast called Inner Guardian, and the host of that he he uses the term understand, and then he he put forth as like three P's uh, to strive for as being protection, peace, and privacy. And thought, you know, this is like a great sort of triangle, the three legs to stand on. And, and so, yeah, it's good to hear your emphasis in this area as well yeah, in the digital I'm, sphere. I'm not familiar with that, but in, order, in terms of like breaking that down to something really quick, um, 
I like that. I'll have to dig more into. Yeah, I'll dig more into that myself. Sure. Yeah, and and yeah, obviously, uh, just for uh, listeners, I'll show in the show notes. I'll link all the uh, your websites and stuff that that have been brought up, so folks are curious to check it out. And uh, yeah, Shane, we've we've really uh, like went through pretty quick, but I think pretty qualitatively most of the questions I had. But um, what other what are uh, it's been insightful. But what have we overlooked? What else would you like to touch on uh, before we go? Yeah, yeah. So. Um... Yeah, I, I guess the, I'll just I'll emphasize it again. Um, just uh, the importance, um, and you know, I'm talking about protection or I'm talking about arbitration or you know, dispute resolution beyond just the protection part. Um, really, like the, these encounters start with, um, oftentimes start with, um, you know, working with somebody that you should have been working with. So again, I'll, I'll emphasize the importance of vetting. You know, vetting wisely, working with people that you trust. Um, and yeah, that you, that you can, you know, live with on a consistent basis, uh, or I guess not live with, um, I guess you yeah, have people you work with, um, it can prevent a lot of, a lot of potential, you know, troubles in, in, in the future. And otherwise, um, I guess that's, yeah, but otherwise I really don't have, uh, I really don't have, uh, have much else to, to add here. Sure. Sure. No, it's been good so far. Um, all right. So I, I guess, do you mind, uh, listing, listing, uh, where folks can find you and, in, in your work, um, I'll be sure to include links, but in case people just want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I mentioned the Vani podcast a number of times. Um, Vaniapodcast.com um, is uh, the website there. Uh, lots of podcasts going coming up on, on five years now. So plenty of content. I always recommend people start back at uh, season one. Um, you know, there's a philosophy side of Vanu and there's an action side of Vanu. And season one kind of goes into the philosophy and some of the definitions and the terms that we talked about. Um, but we go into a lot, a lot of depth. I guess next, uh, libertyattack.com. It used to be a, a podcast and radio show, but now it's just a publishing outfit. We offer um, a lot of the Vanu zines that, um, that we digitize, we put out in paperback format, uh, as well as published. But for people who want the, you know, the physical copies, we put those out and it gives people a way to support our, effort, our efforts too. You can also find, uh, yes, the, the Liberty books, uh, lots of great books there. Um, but we've also got the ghost pads and the ghost phones and then uh, Aura's Apothecary for um, you know, health items we grow here on, on the homestead. Uh, and then lastly, um, so we were talking a lot about individual stuff. Um, well, uh, the, the other project I'm, I do um, is uh, the Free Republic of Pasnia. Essentially, we're, we're, we're building a parallel network. Um, so I guess my next step beyond um, just, uh, you know, building, you know, building that resilient lifestyle for myself is I want to build an overall net, you know, an entire network. Um, or help, help, help put one together with, you know, a lot of great people um, to where we can, we can have all, all of the same have in the first realm of the Serval Society, those, those same sorts of lives, the same sorts of, uh, um, of of conveniences, but upon a framework of a society, mm -hmm. you know, upon a society based upon a framework of foundation of, of, uh, of peace and voluntarism. Um, so that's what Pazni, that's what we're doing at Pazni, is building a, a parallel network. It's kind of a free country project, but that's more so just kind of the dressing um, for a cooperative, um, a decentralized country, is a decentralized network of, of, uh, of, of, of a... Uh, of uh, self-sufficient homesteads uh, and just pocket freedom more generally. Um, so yeah, if people want to learn more about that, uh, pazniacom um, is the website, and um, that's probably the best minute or two explanation I can give on Pasnia. Um, but yeah, people can go there and get get an idea. Yeah, there's also the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence on Telegram if you want to uh, join a, uh, I guess, a community of freedom pioneers uh, that can help you uh, achieve your liberated lifestyle. Uh, it's uh, t. forward slash Pasnia chat. So um, with that, Pete, it was yeah great to connect. A uh, long time coming. Thank you for all that you do too. Um, you've been doing this for uh, maybe even longer than me. So um, I think even longer than me. Um, thanks for all you do too. Yeah, man, you're welcome. And again, appreciate your time. And I appreciate that you got a plug in about Pasnia. And um, I just want to underscore uh, for listeners, Shane's recommendation to start uh, with some of the early episodes of the Vanu podcast. I remember, uh, I think it was 2018, maybe uh, when I first took a deep dive in your content. At the time, my wife and I were living in an RV and I remember where we were. I remember walking through the, this town like different days and just consuming voraciously like hours of this content and and being really st struck by its um, sort of I guess common sense nature and both that it spoke resonated with me and also the uh, the emphasis on action and I thought that was very uh, a breath of fresh air because it wasn't just uh, content to look at you know just theorize and 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 be in the ivory tower but actually. Uh, implement steps and learn from each other and support and and create networks so that's it's really good stuff 
Yeah, certainly. And I guess just just what one of the, one of the thing I could toss in there, um, you know, speaking of technology, is that um, this is a lot easier to do now. Um, so Ray was out and writing on writing on his typewriter in a in a tent, um, and this and that was you know that was what what he did for radical you know self liberation. But uh, but now there's uh, um, technology. Just there's uh, I'm gonna do an episode on. But there's those uh, solar bikes that you can get the electric the electric bikes that can charge the solar panels, and you can also have you know like uh, um, you can have uh, uh, you can plug in your your laptop to it and stuff and charge it. So you could be out in the middle of like the technology is enabled so much. So I guess I I just yeah definitely um, encourage your listeners not to uh, not to think inside the box, think outside the box, and uh, yeah to really to really examine all possibilities. Yeah, and, and it seems like uh, you're definitely sound uh, positive and optimistic, and that's a great uh, mindset to impart on people. So, again, Shane, I appreciate your time and the knowledge that you've brought and uh, encourage folks to check it out. Cheers, brother. Appreciate it. If you found Shane's commentary interesting or insightful, I encourage you to check out the projects he's involved with, where you'll find podcasts, books, and other resources, including privacy-oriented computers and phones. Relevant links are included in the show notes. As always, thanks for your time and for your motivation to self-improve and by doing so to add value to the world around you. Until next time. Own a bookstore and want to offer LUA pub books. Go to a lot of freedom festivals, conferences or gatherings. Maybe you run an online store, a podcast, or a blog. Calling all affiliates and wholesalers. Other than the now defunct Loom Panics Unlimited, may they rest in liberation. There's no other catalog in existence quite like Liberty under attack publications. Chock full of solutions and strategy, Liberty philosophy, spiritual self-liberation, archived Liberty zines, anarchist agorist fiction, and inspirational audiobooks. Our desire has always been to get this philosophy and freedom strategy out to the world, giving as many individuals a way out of the coercive first realm as possible. No paywalls, no political crusading, no bullshit. All solutions and a parallel, Pasnia network to boot. That said, we could always use your help in amplifying our efforts. And we can pay you Bitcoin, Monero, or free gifts for the assistance. You're familiar with one, wholesale, and two, affiliate programs, either buying books in bulk at a discount or earning a commission per sale item. You can find our wholesale prices on the website, and pertaining to our affiliate program, we can offer $1 commission per book sold. This may not sound like much, but bundles are multipliers. For example, you could secure an 18 US dollars commission for selling a self-liberation bundle via your own custom 10% discount code. What about the free gifts? Wholesalers, buy $250 worth of books and get a free LUA publications or Pasnia flag. Affiliates, sell $250 worth of books and get a free LUA publications or Pasnia flag. Sounding good. Interested in joining the LUA pub team? Visit libertyunderattack.com and click on the Work With Us tab for more information. Or email shane at libertyunderattack.com to get on board today. Thanks in advance for your assistance. We look forward to a mutually beneficial and profitable relationship. Cheers from the Free Republic, and see you in the Second Realm.